Welcome back, Sarah, to Season 9, Episode 13 of TAR TV. I'm Rayson. And I'm Fiona, and we're excited to showcase the talent and spirit of Newport Harbor High School. Let's dive on in. First up, we'll be chatting with a Newport Harbor alumni who's making waves in Hollywood as the award-nominated screenwriter. Go ahead. Do you want me to introduce myself? Yes, if you can. Please. Okay. That would be great. Hello, sailors. I am David McKenna. I am a graduate of Newport Harbor High School in 1986. That would make me an old man. Go Tars! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Addison. Hi, Addison. Uh, what do you remember most about your high school experience? Um, what I remember most about my high school experience was playing football at Newport Harbor High because we were really good and our quarterback got a full scholarship to the University of Southern California and our coach was amazing and he taught us um, what it's like to be disciplined, what it's like to work as a team, what it's like to be good, to prepare, and all those um, things um, I took with me um, when I went to college and as an adult in just being prepared for um, anything to come my way. And in life, you are encountering tons of different things. Hi, I'm Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Where did the inspiration for American History X come from? Uh, the inspiration for American History X. Um, the, the inspiration sort of came from, and it's been sort of played with a little bit in the press. Um, back when I was younger, in eighth grade, um, I was into punk rock music. And um, we used to go down to the, the pier in Balboa in the fun zone and this was in the early 80s and the mods and the punks were down there and they were like two different kinds of groups and they used to fight and the punks had shaved heads and all that and so I was around that experience and then um, I had met had run into some skinheads in Huntington Beach in San Diego where um, a, a couple of them hung out and then so the idea was in my head and then um, when the riots came uh, for, uh, of Rodney King um, it, I really kind of thought about doing a movie about um, racism and I kind of pulled sort of uh, you know a whole you know I pulled together all three of those sort of events into my brain and I just wanted to write a movie about a skinhead because I had seen the movie Mississippi Burning which you all should see Mississippi Burning and you should see American History X um, and uh, I wanted to write a skinhead but I wanted to make him intelligent because I wanted to challenge the way people thought and felt about all the different races um, but when you were like writing it did you ever get um, like writer's block or anything or like any troubles with it or did it all just really flow out from the inspiration you had? Um. Writer's block, Jack, is an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, you're always having, you know, some sort of problems. You know, being a successful screenwriter yeah. is just problem solving, you know, and writing is rewriting. You know, you're always bumping up against uh, um, into problems, character moments, structural problems, and uh, you know. So, just a you. There's there's a reason why a 21 year old doesn't sell a script. <clears throat> um, it's because you you have to really program your brain to be able to fix those problems, and it takes years. Um, I sold American History X when I was 25, and that's one of the youngest 
I've heard one of the youngest, not the youngest, but you know, most people sell successful screenwriters sell their first script in their late twenties, early thirties. <clears throat> um, but I had been working since I was nineteen, and so it literally took me. You know, I worked through college. I, by the time I graduated college, I had three screenplays written, very, very terrible, horrible screenplays. But at least I did it, and um, and that is the key because later on you're going to learn as you get older and your brain starts to develop more and from experience of doing, uh, uh, you learn how to fix all those problems and so it kind of becomes second nature. But still, <clears throat> being an old man that I am, I still get, you still get nervous and scared when you take on a new project and that's sort of exhilarating. Um, it makes it fun and challenging. That's why I still love doing it. What were some reactions that you remember to people watching American History X? Wow. Um, yeah, when we first screened it for the studio, I knew we had something special when the studio guy, when the head of the studio just sat there for a few minutes and just didn't say anything. He goes, just let me catch my thoughts here for a second. <clears throat> um, the premiere was uh, pretty amazing. And the one thing that I do remember most was um, I went to go speak in Chicago and uh, there was a big panel and it was the mayor was there and they screened it in this huge theater that sat about a thousand people it was kind of like the size of big Newport and I remember being in the back of the theater and I always loved there's a certain part of the movie that's extremely violent it's one of the most violent scenes in the history of cinema in my opinion and uh, um, I just remember a thousand people simultaneously jumping out of their seats at the same time and having that rear perspective of all the back of the heads just going like this at the same time. <laughs> that was, uh, that brought a smile to my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the movie, you know, the movie changed my life. It changed my career. It, 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 it provided, it provided a, a template for me to make a living in a very, very difficult business. It's a very difficult, ruthless business. And uh, I'm glad my kids are not getting into it. Um, but, you know, hey, if you have a certain dream of being in, of doing something, you follow that dream. Um, what experiences from Newport Harbor did you draw on while writing your screenplay? Oh, um, when I was at Newport Harbor, I had fun, and um, and uh, I had lots of great experiences. You know, I was on ASB. I played football. Um, I loved my teachers. Um, I loved learning, and you combine all those. I had great friends. You know, we were crazy, and to combine all that stuff, you're you're creating great material in your life for you to write later and uh and then it, that transfers over to college that transfers over to traveling if you travel after college if you uh you meet weird people you interview your job your work whatever you know every single day and the key is is being observant you know and taking notes and getting back to the question of you know you know i think that with newport harbor you know a lot of it was just discipline you know, I had teachers that had high expectations. I had coaches with high expectations. And, and as a result of that, um, the transfers over into life. You know, what you, what you learn here and what you learn from coaches and teachers is pivotal, you know, in how you approach and attack life. Hey, I would love for everybody to get their tickets. If you haven't seen American History X and you're 16 or over, I think you are okay to go see it. Get the parental permission slip signed. Go there on April 27th, I think at 2 p.m. 
and go see American History X. It's well worth it. Um, I'll be there afterwards. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A, and it'll be super, super fun. So be there or be square. <laughs> hey, did you catch that softball game last week? No. No worries. Here's what you missed from our spring sports season. Let's swing into action with our Newport Harbor baseball team, holding a current challenging record of 10 wins and 12 losses. They beat the Marina Vikings 6-4 on April 16th at Marina. The team recently played in Angel Stadium, beating the Marina Vikings 3-1. Standout players include Dominic Vigilone, Lucas Perez, Elijah Hasseth, and Jack Pinker. Catch their next game today at home at 3:15 against Laguna Beach. Go out and show your school spirit, Sabres. Next at bat, a tale of resilience unfolds on the softball diamond as the Newport Harbor girls softball team continues their season with unwavering determination, despite facing a challenging record of three wins and 16 losses. Led by standout players Ava Nolan and Ali Shaw, the team embodies the spirit of perseverance as they strive to turn their season around. Be sure to catch their next game on April 25th away against the Edison Chargers. The boys lacrosse team still has a long way to go, but currently stands with a record of three wins and nine losses. The team has shown incredible resilience against teams like University, Edison, and Dana Hills. They recently played against Limit on April 5th and won 18-0. Players like McKay Ketchum, Benson Avila, Gavin Braun, and Tanner Latham have been vital to the team. They play their next game on Tuesday, April 25th against St. Francis. Be sure to show your school spirit and support the boys as they go for the win this Thursday. The Newport Harbor girls lacrosse team, despite a recent setback, continues to demonstrate strength and determination on the field. With a record of eight wins and eight losses, the team has showcased their competitive spirit throughout the season. Key players Lucy Tui, Brooklyn Matusik, Emma Chex, and Kara Fior have been instrumental in the team's success, displaying exceptional skill and leadership both on and off the field. Their contributions have been pivotal in several key victories, driving the team forward with their talent and dedication. With a current record of six wins and seven losses, Newport Harbor boys tennis has been navigating through a competitive season, facing formidable opponents such as Huntington Beach on Tuesday, April 16th, losing 4-14 to and striving to showcase their skills on the court. Jasper Hine and Ryan Kingoli have been instrumental in leading the team, demonstrating their talent and determination in every match. Their contributions have been pivotal in the team's performance, inspiring their teammates to give their best effort on the court. Let's make sure to show our support to the boys tennis team as they face more opponents in the near future. Newport Harbor High School boys and girls swim teams are making waves this season with impressive performances in the pool. The girls team boasts a solid record of four wins and two losses, while the boys team stands a record of three wins and three losses, showcasing the competitive spirit and dedication. Standouts for the girls team include Ariana Amoroso, Caitlin State, Kylie Robinson, and Angelina Peterson, whose exceptional performances have been instrumental in the team's success. Meanwhile, key players for the boys team such as Aiden Airy, Connor Ohl, and Mason Netzer, have consistently delivered strong performances, keeping their team in contention. With determination running high and the support of their teammates and coaches behind them, Newport Harbor swim teams are poised to make a splash at the league finals and leave their mark on the season. Newport Harbor boys golf team is gearing up for the upcoming match against Marina today. Eager to build on their recent success with a current record of four wins and four losses, the team has shown promise on the course throughout the season. In their last match, Newport Harbor secured a decisive victory over Huntington Beach, showcasing their skill and determination. Key players such as Gavin Dodman, Zach Moreau, and Ben Glasson have played pivotal roles in the team's success, contributing their talent and leadership to secure the win. As they prepare to face Marina today at 2.30, Newport Harbor boys golf remains focused on maintaining their momentum and executing their game plan effectively. With a roster filled with talented players and, ed and dedicated coaching staff, they are well positioned to continue their winning ways and improve upon their record. Newport Harbor High School's boys and girls track and field team is making waves this season with a commendable record of two wins and one loss. In their latest league meet against Laguna Beach, the team showcased their prowess on the track, securing a notable victory. However, it was their recent performance at the Orange County Championships that truly solidified their standing as a force to be reckoned with. The varsity girls team in particular delivered an outstanding performance, clinching a remarkable second place finish in the entire county. 
With their eyes set on further success, the team is gearing up for an upcoming league prelims this Friday, where they aim to continue their winning streak. Among the standout athletes who have been instrumental in the team's success are Keaton Robar, Marley Macalo, Natalie McCarty, and Mila Aguilar for the girls' team, while Carlos Maradiaga, Alan Elendi, Elliot Berlamont, and Josiah Lamarque have been shining stars for the boys' team. Newport Harbor boys' volleyball team continues to impress with their remarkable current record of 25 wins and 6 losses, showcasing their talent and determination on the court. However, their recent match against Mardis on Saturday, April 13th, ended in an unfortunate loss and a historic finalist appearance at the Santa Barbara Tournament of Champions, highlighting the competitive nature of the sport. Despite the setback, key players such as J.P. Wardy, Riggs Guy, and Jack Bondere have been instrumental in the team's success throughout the season. The team's collective effort and dedication have propelled Newport Harbor Boys Volleyball to the upper echelons of the sport, earning them recognition and respect within the volleyball community. That was so cool. What's next? Hmm. Ooh, I know. How about some behind the scenes at the Shipyard Cafe? Count me in. Welcome to Life in the Harbor. I'm Morgan, and today we're going to be looking at Culinary Shipyard Cafe. Let's get right into it. Um, I'm Mrs. Kingsbury, and I teach the baking and pastry classes. I teach the intermediate culinary arts class, and I teach a couple foods classes. Why do you think it's important to have a culinary program on campus? I think it's important because everybody's going to need to cook eventually, even if they don't become a chef. And I think it also gives a place for people on campus that may not have found their niche and then they take our classes and they realize they end up really loving it. What's the workload for someone in this program? So there's not essentially a lot of homework, but we do a lot of production in class. So most of our work that they do gets done in class. We either sell it or they eat it. And when we do competition, there is some outside class work. But as long as you show up every day and work hard, then that's basically the workload. What kind of students should join this program? Anybody should join this program, especially if you have a really good attitude and you just love to learn. We love all kinds of students in our classes. Why did you join culinary? Um, I joined culinary for my love of cooking. I really like cooking and it's really fun. What do you like making in culinary? Um, I really like making the lemonade or the cookies, and sometimes we make cake, and it's really fun. <laughs> what do you usually order at Shipyard Cafe? Um, if they have it, I get the breakfast burrito combo, and I get that with home fries, and I usually grab an iced chai, but I got a mocha today. What do you like about Shipyard Cafe? Um, I like that it's like super accessible because it's just on campus, and I like that it's affordable for students, and that I can get like a coffee every day. What's your usual order at Shipyard Cafe? Uh, normally I'll get a lemonade or a chai. I really like the little drinks they have in the fridge. What do you like about Shipyard Cafe? I really like that it's run by students. I think it's really cool that we're able to have a culinary program here at Harbor, and we're really fortunate for that. And so I think it's really awesome that the students get to enjoy the things that students in culinary make. Speaking of sports, stay tuned as one of our TAR TV reporters takes on lacrosse for the very first time. Hi, my name is Peaches Kulik. This is TAR TV Tries, and today we're going to be trying boys lacrosse. Let's head to the field. Let's do this. Get ready. No, that's embarrassing. <laughs> the beat of the breeze, the sound of the band. We're all here together. Everybody clap your hands. Celebrate yourself. Let what? yourself not fly. Not fly. You're one of a kind. Everybody jump up high. Oh. The world needs you, you to rock. The world needs you, you to rock. Hello, my name is Ben Sevilla. I'm a captain of the boys lacrosse team. I think Peaches did amazing today, and I feel like she should be on the girls lacrosse team. She learned to throw the ball pretty quick. She had a natural love for the game. I think she could play with the guys more often. Hey everyone, my name is Blake. I am the lacrosse coach at Newport Harbor. Um, today we had Peaches come out and she looked like a natural. Frankly, we were, everyone, even team was surprised. Brought the effort and energy and uh, she, she's, she's competitive. I mean, she gave them a run for their money. So hopefully, you know, she uh, come back out 
and uh, give the boys a run for their money. Thank you for watching this episode of TAR TV. Don't forget to use hashtag NHHS at TAR TV to be featured in the next episode. And as always, Go, go Sailors! sailors.